Hey YouTube, today's video is going to be short and sweet. I just wanted to take a few moments to share a lesson with you that I've learned about my insomnia, a major productivity interrupter if there ever was one. Actually, I have three takeaways and I hope they'll be useful for you if you do have insomnia, but even if you don't, I'd like to think these three are universal and can be applied across various situations, so I hope you'll stick with me. So, over the last few years, insomnia has become a regular part of my life. <sighs> After getting frustrated um, for a long time, dealing with it by just kind of not dealing with it, I finally admitted that it was a thing and I decided to work with it. There I am, lying wide awake. And when I'm awake, trying to get back to sleep by just sort of insisting that I get back to sleep, tossing and turning, it's just sort of frustrating and useless. So I've made what I call the 2.30 a.m. list. I keep it on the bulletin board near my desk. You know, it's kind of a given that I'm unlikely to have my wits about me at 2.30 in the morning, so I've given myself a boost, a pre-written list of activities that I can do at that time of day. Things that I can do to keep life moving, but not things that require keen focus or concentration, both of which are basically a wall at that hour of the morning. Here's what's currently on the list. Write a letter to a friend, write in my journal, jot down work notes swirling in my head, toss in a load of laundry, catch up on shredding, tidy the living room, slice up some veggies, and of course my favorite, read. So this is the first takeaway. Maybe what we would call the productivity hack in here, making the most of your insomnia sessions. If you've got the time, you might as well use it. I wonder, do you have any areas of your life, insomnia or otherwise, that could benefit from a pre-list to make the most of your time? A list optimized for the circumstances that you'll be in? Perhaps a list of what you could do on your cross-country flight if you find yourself without any Wi-Fi. A list of what you could do while waiting in line to pick up your kid when you have limited space. I'll remind you that some of your options on this list could be sitting with yourself, or staring into space, or having a think. But if you're like me and you're inclined to jump to scrolling on your phone, perhaps having a list of other possibilities could be, you know, more life-giving and less doom scrolly. My second takeaway, this 2.30 a.m. list is more than a hack. It is actually evidence of me taking care of my future self. I wrote this list because I was at sea some nights, knew I was too awake to try to sleep, but not awake enough to think clearly about the best thing to do with that time. Armed with this pre-written list, I don't have to try to think of the best thing to do. I can just glance down the list and see what feels good. You know, it's kind of a parallel to my professional life. <laughs> As an accountant, I think sometimes we are in the business of taking care of our future selves. When we prepare a file, you actually have to make notes about the way you did something and why you did it. You show your theory behind the decisions you made. And most importantly, you tell your future self what's already done and what needs future attention. This, of course, is the benefit for others who read the file, but it's for yourself too. So, you know, the next time you open that file, you're greeted with an orientation to where you left it off, so you can just dive right back in. So I wonder, are there areas of your life that could benefit from you taking a few moments to take care of your future self? Maybe you can put fresh linens on the bed before you go on a trip like Elizabeth Gilbert's mother does. I'll link to a quick little article that she wrote uh, below in the comments about that. But the point is her future self, Elizabeth Gilbert's future mother, comes home to a clean and comfortable place to rest her head after a long trip because her current self took the time to do that favor for her future self. Maybe another example, maybe you could move the recycling bin next to the front door so the future you can always have a place to dump that three quarters of the mail that should just go straight to the recycling and doesn't deserve a place in your home at all and normally just ends up uh, as clutter on the kitchen counter. If you have other ideas about how to take care of your future self, let us know in the comments below. Okay, and so here's my third insomnia takeaway. I'm working with the principle of dealing with what is. The reality of my life and that of many others is that on some nights I wake up in the middle of the night and don't get back to sleep for quite a while. It's a thing. And rather than fight it, I'm just going to let it be. Now, of course, if it rose to the level of a serious medical condition, I do something about it. I'm not suggesting that, you know, your arm gets cut off and you're bleeding profusely and you just say, oh, well, that is what it is, so we'll just let it be. Of course, <laughs> you should take care of important medical conditions. But sometimes we just gotta roll with stuff. And for my case, my insomnia is just one of them. 
So wait, why do we roll with this stuff? Well, let's pause for a moment and talk about a little concept from Buddhism called the second arrow. The second arrow is when you are in some sort of pain. Life has handed you something unpleasant, as it does, and rather than just letting it be, you pile on. We pile on in all kinds of ways. We feel guilty, we yell at ourselves, we deny, we blame, we fight, we do everything we can to avoid the reality of the pain. But what we're actually doing is adding to the pain. We are already stung by that first arrow and then we're stabbing ourselves again with the second one when we pile on the shame and the guilt and the everything. In my case, getting mad at the insomnia and just trying to fight it away was actually only adding to my misery. I would get riled up, which would make sleeping even harder, and I would tell myself stories about why the lack of sleep was my own fault. If I was somehow a better person or doing something differently, then this wouldn't happen to me. But when I made that 2.30 a.m. list, it was an act of me removing that second arrow. I was saying, nope, this isn't my fault. And nope, I'm not gonna let anger and frustration ruin the vibe here. Rather, I'm just going to let it be and make the most of it. <laughs> Perhaps I was channeling my, I think it's eighth generation ancestor, Benjamin Franklin, who is known to have taken what he called air baths in the middle of the night, which I think is just him sitting naked in the window. <laughs> um, sitting naked in the window is not on my 2.30 a.m. list, but like my great, 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 something, something, something grandfather, I've come to fully accept the reality of the situation that sometimes you spend time in the middle of the night doing something other than sleep. There's even a term for it. It's called biphasic sleep. And there's some evidence that before the invention of the light bulb, it was actually commonplace. So this is a productivity channel and figuring out how to pull out that second arrow isn't exactly directly related to productivity, right? But isn't it? Isn't my experience of moving through my life's activities that much better if I'm working with my own reality rather than fighting the losing battle of insisting it be something other than what it is? You know that saying, revenge is best served cold? Well, I say productivity is best served on a warm platter of self-awareness and self-acceptance. All right, so those are my three takeaways from dealing with my insomnia, making the most of my time, being kind to my future self, and working with the reality of what is. If you have a moment to give a like to the video to help out the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And no matter what, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.